Hey everybody, welcome back to day 12 of Top Dog Toba, where we bring you a video every single day of October. Now, I need you to do me a little favor because I'm getting a bit worried that I'm going to lose this forfeit. You know, it could happen. It keeps changing up and down every day. Oh, I don't like it, okay? So I at least need to know who's your favorite host? Who's doing a better job? Is it me or Dylan? Is it Grumpy Dylan or me, your favorite host? <laughs> Let us know in the comments down below. Now, before I get started with today's video, you know what I'm going to say. If you're liking these videos, okay, and parents, if you're listening in particular, if your kids are liking these videos, then you will love our 11 plus preparation resources, which you can find on our website, www.topdogonline.co.uk. And the great thing is, every single week, we release an English verbal reasoning, maths, and non-verbal reasoning full lesson video that comes complete with a homework task, which you can download as well. In that homework task, you can independently practice what we've been teaching you in the lessons. And you can even watch a walkthrough if you want to see how to solve every single question in that task. Now, the best bit is if you purchase our one-off price and get the whole year, you can use the discount code Vote Hayden, or you can use Vote Dylan, but obviously that one's a terrible code. But they both give you 15% off of the purchase price, which is a nice meaty chunk to save. And you can only do it in October this year. So make sure you get involved as quick as you can. Anyways let's get to it. So yesterday, Dylan left you with this nasty question, I will say. He's a bit of a meanie. He was really trying to challenge you, but I guess he just wanted you to come back. You get it, us YouTubers, that's what we want. So here's the answer. The um, the top option was the better, was the best option. If taking 176 pounds and then half again the next day, half of 176 being 88, it adds up to a little bit more than starting with 85 and doubling it the next day and taking that on as well. Okay, nice little trick there would be knowing that when you double 85 and get 170, as soon as you notice that that's lower than 176, then by definition, you know it's actually going to be a worse option if you think about it. Anyway, on to today's one. So we've got some riddles. Now, I'm looking a bit confused because I told you that Dylan's added something uh, sneaky to these lessons, right? Um he's added this bottom riddle and I've not seen this before. I'm reading it right now. I'm a bit worried. So let's, let's look at these riddles. Now you're probably used to this kind of thing, right? You're thinking riddles. Yeah. Like what tastes better than it smells? Do you know the answer? Do you know the answer to this? Well, I'll reveal it to you right now. A tongue. Get it. Oh, oh never mind. What becomes shorter when you add two letters to it? I love this riddle. This is a good one. Short. <laughs> ER. You add ER, it makes it shorter. No, not. Okay. Last one. And this is something Dylan's put in. A man goes out in heavy rain with nothing to protect him from it. His hair doesn't get wet. How? Hmm. I don't know the answer to this one. His hair doesn't get wet, but he's in the rain. I don't know. Uh, he is bald. Hey! And he's put a picture of me. Brilliant. Well, let's get him back, guys. Make sure you watch this video way more than you watch his so that I get those thousands of views racking up and he has to do the forfeit. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Moving on, that's not the kind of riddles you'll see in the test. These are the kind of riddles that you'll see in the test. Actual verbal reasoning riddles, not just ones for fun. Now, these riddles take a little bit more brain power to solve because there's often a bit more information. So I'm going to read this one through with you and show you my strategies on solving riddles. Okay, so first of all, this little bit of space here is, is like a holy space. We want to keep that because we want to take jottings as we do these questions. But the first time, I always just read it through once. Five classmates have a times table competition to see who can answer the most in 60 seconds. Florence scored less than Mikey. Oscar scored higher than River. Penelope and Florence scored the same. And Oscar got the second highest score. Who got the highest score? So with this information, we can work out who got the highest score. And what I recommend is once you've read it once, you start jotting down some information that you noticed that compares them. So if Florence scored less than Mikey, I'm going to put an M here for Mikey and I'm going to put Florence below. I don't know if there's people in between. Or if they're the top two, I just I just don't know. So I'm going to leave a big enough gap for either situation. Oscar scored higher than River. Okay, that's useful, but I don't know where it goes in, in, in terms of Mikey and Florence. So do you know what? I'm going to tick this line off, but I'm not going to tick the second line off. I'm going to come back to that and see if something helps me. Penelope and Florence scored the same. Well, that's useful. So I could put Penelope at the same line as Florence. That's cool. Uh, it still doesn't help me with Oscar and River. Oscar got the second highest score. Hang on a minute. Oscar got the second highest score. So if Oscar got the second highest score, he can't be below these two because then he would be in at least third place. So he must be above them, but he can't be above Mikey. Otherwise, then he wouldn't have the second highest score because what we also know as we go back to this is that Oscar scored higher than River. So River was either here 
or here. It doesn't really matter. We just know that River didn't win. So if Oscar got the second highest score and everyone else was below Oscar, then Mikey must be the winner. So Mikey got the highest score and we've used all of the information. Pretty cool, right? So that's how you solve these riddles. You have to take jottings and sometimes your jottings will change or you'll learn new information and you'll you know give them a bit of a scrub out and you'll write it over here, okay, like that. And, and, you'll, and you'll change it as you go. And that's absolutely fine, okay? So that's what we're gonna do. So here's my next question. I want you to use the same sort of logic and get you to pause the video, get a bit of paper or something to write on. And I want you to read the information one time through first. And then I want you to start making jottings to see if you can work out which company raised the most money. So it's the same logic as the last question, different context, different facts. Why don't you have a go at that now? Right, let's do this. Five companies raise money for charity. Okay, here's our five companies. Here's our facts. Company one raised more overall money than company four and five combined. So one is quite high up, four and five. We don't know their order, but we know they're down here somewhere. So this is probably gonna change when I get more information. We just know that they're down here. Company three raised 200 pounds more than company five. Okay, three is definitely higher than five by 200 more. Interesting. Again, this might all change in the minute how we how we lay it out. Um, company two and four raise the exact same amount of money. Okay, so two and four they are together, right? These guys these guys are locked in together. Good stuff. Um, company one raised five hundred pounds. So I'm going to put my jottings here. Now, what I don't know right now is if company three is higher than company one or not. Okay, simple as that. They could all be. Uh, sorry, if company three could be higher than company one, you don't know. Um, hopefully some more facts will help us. Company three raised 100 pounds less than company four. That completely changes my order. So now I've got two and four, and one has to be above them, because remember our first fact, it raised more than four, okay? Three is now below four, and we know that five is below three. So I'm gonna move this out of the way. From my, from my fact earlier, I know that five was uh, 100, 200 pounds different. And I now know that three is 100 pounds different. Okay, and one is back up here with 500 pounds. So I'm now confident from my thinking and my diagrams and going back and forth that company one raised the most money at 500 pounds. Pretty cool. Lots of information there to, to sift through, but you can get there. Now, those riddles are fairly straightforward. They are often are like, who did the most, who did the least? That kind of ordering event sort of type of question. But there's another type of riddle that I, I find trickier, okay? And I call them must be and could be um, riddles. So we must understand the difference between these modal verbs, must be and could be. Must be means it can be proven to be true. Could be means we can't prove it. It might be true but we can't prove it. So when we are faced with a question like this, and if we just skip straight to the last bit here, it says, which one of the following sentences must be true? What that means is one of these statements is provable. The others are either not true or they could be true, but we can't prove it. So it's not the answer. Pretty tricky stuff. So let me talk you through this one. And then I'm gonna leave one with you guys to have a go at before the next video. So this is how it works. We read the information once first. Natasha is six years younger than Andrew. Katie is three years older than Janica and Firoz. Andrew is 10. Katie is Natasha's twin sister. That's important for ages. Let's think about that. So now we've read it, we can start jotting down some of our logic about their ages. So we've got Natasha and Andrew. I'm gonna put Andrew here and Natasha is six years younger. Cool. Andrew is 10. I'm gonna skip straight to that third line. As I've read it all, I know where to look now. That means Natasha is four. Cool. Katie is three years older than Yannicka and Firoz. And also Katie is Natasha's twin sister. So that's really important because that means Katie is four because she's Natasha's twin sister. And she's three years older than Yannicka and Firoz. So that means Yannicka and Firoz are three years younger than this, which means they are just one year old. So there we go. We've actually worked out all their ages. We've got two people at one years old, two people at four years old and Andrew who's a bit older at 10. Nice, now we can look at these statements and see which ones are true. Firoz is younger than Yannicka. No, could be true by, it could be true because they, they could both be one but different months apart. But we don't know, we just know they're both one. So we can't prove it, it's, it can't, it doesn't fall into the statement of must be true. You with me? Andrew is the oldest in his family. 
good trap answer, isn't it, guys? If they just said that, then we'd be circling it in his family. We don't know. We don't know if this is his family or not. It doesn't tell us. Could be true, but we don't know that it must be true. Yannicka is one year old. We know that that is true because we've done the working out. So C is our answer. Just a really quick check for the sake of the video. Natasha is six years old. No, we know that she's four. Okay. And Katie is older than Andrew. No, we know that she's six years younger. So in this question, we had two could be's, two no's, and one must be true that we could prove. Remember, remember, remember that is the key to success here. All right. Okay, guys, I'm going to leave you with this question. You can get the answer in tomorrow's video. But use my advice. Which of the following sentences must be true based on the information above? Don't forget to use your pen to take some jottings. Guys, thank you for joining me. Check out the community tab in our YouTube channel to see the running updates. We update it as much as we can on who is winning uh, and who is likely to be doing the forfeit. Guys, have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow for day 13.